Welcome back. I'm Francesca Page, and here's your Newsmax Now update. General Motors CEO is back on Capitol Hill today to testify in front of Congress. Congressional leaders want to know how thousands of companies' employees failed to notice that something was wrong. GM is accused of dragging its feet in, feet in regard to vehicle, faulty vehicles. A report states the company knew that several GM cars had flawed ignition switches, which cut power, stalled engines, and disabled airbags. The faulty ignition switches have been linked to 13 deaths and more than 15 crashes. CEO Mary Barra says GM has begun taking corrective action and is changing its corporate culture. The United States Patent Office is saying Washington Redskins nicknamed its despairing Native Americans. The Patent Office has decided to suspend all federal trademarks of the NFL team. The decision comes after a campaign to change the team name gained momentum. One of the proponents for the change is Democratic Senator Harry Reid. So I urge Daniel Snyder to do what's morally right and remove this degrading term from the league by changing his team's name. A few hour ago, hours ago, the Washington Redskins tweeted a link to their press release which says today's ruling by the U.S. Patents Office will have no effect on the team's ownership and right to use the Redskins' name and logo. That's your Newsmax Now update. I'm Francesca Page. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We welcome back Francesca Page, who's still here. John Bachman joins us on set once again. We get a couple of minutes here to take our breath and catch everything up here. The news today, of course, uh, the Washington Redskins now, um, the U.S. Patent Office, canceling their patents. I think you could see this coming, though, and I think even Daniel Schneider knows that this is coming. Sooner or later, he is going to have to change the name of that franchise. Yeah, and, I, and I'm, you know, what happens next? Do people start printing up shirts and selling them in front of... Uh the stadium and, and marketing. Yeah, so they can now. So th that's one way that this is going to change well, there's things. There's going to be an appeal too, John. I, I think there's, they've said that there's going to be an appeal and, and they're allowed to use the name or, or some aspect of the name until the, the appeal goes through. Oh, it could take years. Right. I mean, th th there's no doubt. This is something else that's going to be stuck up in the courts for years and the Redskins will still be the Redskins. And now I think Daniel Snyder will probably have some sort of a, a way out almost as well. Everybody mm -hmm. wants it, now we have to change it because he is stubborn. I know people who have worked with Snyder for years and they say that even in private conversations, he says, absolutely not, we will not change this name. It's fine, everything's yeah. good. He is He's set in that mindset right now. Well, I would think this is going to be a huge distraction as these NFL teams begin their OTAs, as they're called, their, their non-official practices this summer and get ready to get to training camp. Uh, in about a couple months or so, this is the question that every sports reporter is going to be asking every single player on the Redskins. Do you think the logo should be changed? What do you think about what happened with the patent office? What do you think uh, about the future of the Redskins organization? Don't you agree? It, absolutely. And the players are going to get, they probably will get the public relations department. We'll sit with them and go, okay, guys, here's the answer right now. I'm sorry, but that's not football related. I don't really wish to answer that. They'll just slough it off and they'll give it one of those um, those standard answers. You'll be able to play the tape back over and over again with the same answer. It, yeah, it really will. Yeah, you think of the nuclear douche. Uh, you know, nuclear douche? With, yeah, stick with the cliches. Here's right? your cliches. I mean, yeah. I'm just happy to be here. One thank, day at a time. Thankful for the yeah, team. Yeah. One, one, one day at a time. Well, this is going on for a little while because this happened back in 2003. If, and, and originally they said, well, we can't change the name because you should have gone ahead and done this back in 1967 when, when the name came about about the first place so this has been ongoing for a little well, while but back in 1967 when the Redskins name actually came up this was not a big deal in the country at this time it yeah. really wasn't the Redskins was looked at it right. was just a nickname right. then but of course mores have changed now social right. times have changed right. right and this is this has happened you know you can think back to Syracuse which used to be the orange men now just the orange Stanford used to be uh, something else now they're just the Cardinal and it, this is a uh, I think the, the public opinion is mounting against Dan Snyder in this case, and he's going to have to make a choice. We'll see choice. what happens, and here's the next thing. Once the Redskins are gone, then, of course, people are going to look at the Cleveland Indians. They're going to say the Indians itself is not a racist it's name, but the team. logo yeah. itself is something the that logo. Native Americans have been talking about for many years is something that, that they would like to see disappear. Uh, we'll follow that. Uh, we'll have to get to uh, smartphones a little bit later on. Thank you, Mr. Bachman. No I'll see you. Francesca, thank you so much for Thanks, joining sir. us as well. You work around a TV newsroom long enough, you'll understand the need to seek ways of lowering your blood pressure. Here's Dr. Chauncey Crandall with this Medical Minute. Hello, I'm back this week with this very important question. Is your doctor taking your blood pressure correctly? You may assume so, but a new study shows you may be wrong. According to this new research, doctors often cut corners when taking blood pressure and record readings that may be much too high. This is important information. First, if your blood pressure reading is wrong, 
you could be misdiagnosed with high blood pressure and put on powerful drugs for the rest of your life. You could also be denied health insurance and your job may even be put in jeopardy. This is important information, so pay close attention. Number one, is your doctor using the right size blood pressure cuff? Cuffs come in two different sizes, average and large, but too often only the average size cuff is even used, even on the person with a larger forearm. If the cuff is too tight, the reading will be too high. Number two, is your blood pressure taken in both of your arms? Doctors are taught that this is not mandatory, but it should be. Even a small difference between the two pressure readings can mean you are at great risk of suffering from a stroke or even dying of heart disease. And number three, is your blood pressure taken when you are seated on the examining table with your legs dangling in the air? If so, your reading may be 10 points too high. You should be seated in the chair with your feet on the floor and your legs apart and relaxed. Don't cross your legs at either the knees or the ankles. Remember, if your doctor doesn't take your blood pressure the correct way, you could be putting your health at risk. Many of you already have my book, The Simple Heart Cure. So if you do, you can read all about high blood pressure in Chapter 8. That's my health tip for this week. I'll see you next week with another important Heart Health Minute. Get your copy of Dr. Crandall's best-selling book, The Simple Heart Cure, for just $4.95 with this special offer. Go to www.simpleheartbook.com to get your copy today. That's simpleheartbook.com. Falls are the number one cause of injury to senior citizens. Falling down stairs can be disastrous. Acorn Stair Lifts has a solution. Just don't fall. Sit, relax, ride with an Acorn Stair Lift, the world's leader in stair lifts. That's right. Don't let limited mobility keep you from going up and down your stairs even outside. Call Acorn Stair Lifts now for a free information kit and no obligation quote. Now you can safely ride with your Acorn Stair Lift. Now I don't have to worry about him climbing those stairs again. And our Acorn Stair Lift was very affordable. Our Acorn Stair Lift is definitely more affordable than moving. The Acorn Stair Lift has a padded seat and backrest for maximum comfort. It easily folds up for access to the stairway. Five safety sensors stop your Acorn stair lift if there's something in the way. And it even runs during power outages. And I'm the king of my own castle again. You'll be working directly with the world's leader in stair lifts. That's right, there's no middleman. Acorn's trained technicians professionally install your stair lift directly to the staircase, in most cases in two hours or less, with no need for special construction. We don't leave until you're completely comfortable using your Acorn stair lift. Don't risk a serious fall down the stairs. I was really surprised at how little they cost. Call for your free no obligation information kit and quote from Acorn stair lifts. Just don't fall. Safely ride up and down your steps. Give your life a lift with an Acorn stair lift. Call 1-800-514-1402 for your free information kit. That number again is 1-800-514-1402 or visit our website today. Call now. My name is Ed Berliner. I'm a host and a news anchor here at Newsmax. This country is desperate for a new voice to speak to that new generation that wants to know it all. Don't give me just half the story. Don't give me a piece of it. Let me get it all every single day. When people come to Newsmax, they're going to get an entire story. A new voice, a new generation. Newsmax TV. We have thousands of youth on our hands, and so, as young as three, that are unaccompanied minors. And we, we have to take care of them, and we have to figure out how to repatriate them back to their home countries. This administration is trying to find a way to repatriate them into the United States of America. So I would be negotiating with the donor countries, uh, the Central American countries, and Mexico. I'd be looking at the foreign aid that we send to them. I'd be slowing that down if we didn't get cooperation. 
but I believe that they can be repatriated in their home countries and we should be taking them back for those countries to take care of their people. If we don't, we're going to see an endless flood from Central and, South, and Central and America and Mexico. This is the tip of the iceberg. It will get a lot greater if we don't shut this down. Well, the American West is changing before our very eyes, and it's not a change everyone is in favor of. We hear all about how the current wave of illegal immigrants pouring into America is affecting states such as Arizona and Texas, but there are indeed others who are feeling the effect, and they are talking about it. This is our Around the Dial segment. We bring in the best and brightest minds currently being heard on the radio dial. A pleasure to welcome into Midpoint the former director of FEMA, now commanding the airwaves weekdays on KHOW Radio in Denver, Colorado. Michael Brown joins us today. Mike, thanks for taking the time. My pleasure, Ed. Good to talk to you. You also. It sounds like Governor Hickenlooper out in Colorado is himself uh, backing up, and uh, he has his own problems now dealing with the immigration issues. Tell us what's got everybody riled up. Well, he's what everybody's got it riled up right now because he went to a sheriff's association meeting last, I think it was last Friday, and basically said, hey, guys, uh, I, I came to apologize. I didn't realize that these gun control laws that the democratically controlled legislature was passing was going to be so controversial. He didn't understand that there was any concern about these gun control laws. So he went down to Aspen and, and told them how sorry he was. And, and he bumbled along for about, oh, I, I think I've got like a three or four minute video that Revealing Politics did. And it's amazing to me. He talks about they didn't do their research before the laws were passed. Had he known if they were going to be controversial, he might have done, might have done something else. Admitted that his apology based on some childhood story was what he called a half-assed apology. And what it boiled down to was the governor, typically just like Obama does, is leading from behind. This guy, I don't think could, I mean, I'm trying to be charitable here. He oh, stop it, Mike. Stop by being by charitable. You're a radio talk show host. Stop being okay. charitable. I don't, think he could, I don't think he could lead his way out of a paper bag. Okay. He honestly was telling the, oh, oh and the sheriffs, I had done a, uh, an event during the debate on these bills a couple of years ago where I told the average Colorado, look, I know you can't take the time to protest. You, you've got to work. But many of you drive around the Capitol building during your everyday you know, life. So as you do, go by and honk. So we had just thousands of people going around the Capitol and honking about these gun control bills. Then the sheriffs, 40 or 45 sheriffs out of 70-some counties, showed up and tried to meet with the governor and he tried to claim he didn't know the sheriffs wanted to meet with him. I just love it when they do that. Uh, um, I also note that Castle Rock, which is a community that is south of Denver, they have an open carry of firearms vote coming up on August 19th. Right. Mike, right. Do, do us a favor here for the people who don't live out west. And, of course, gun control is such a large debate that we're having right now. There are people watching us who will ask both sides of the question, but they'll ask why is it so important to the people in Colorado that they are allowed to carry guns openly? Well, let, let me let me give you just a little bit of history. I, I'm one I'm one of those guys that has never believed that I need a license to to exercise my Second Amendment right. The Second Amendment says, you know, that the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So why should I have to go to the government to get a license that says I can put a nine millimeter on my hip, and if I put a suit coat on or a jacket, that then becomes a concealed weapon that I need a license for. But if I take my jacket off, now I don't need a license for that. And some states have just a blanket open carry law. You can open carry anywhere, anytime. They, they don't try to infringe that. There are some municipalities in Colorado who are going the step further and saying, even though you can generally carry an open, open carry in Colorado, they want to take it further and say, there are no restrictions. In other words, if I want to uh, walk into a public park with a with a firearm on my holster, I can do that. And Castle Rock's trying to get that passed. It's gone through one reading. It might go through a couple of other readings. We're finally seeing some pushback in Colorado from what the progressive Democrats have done. They've controlled the legislature and the governor's office for two years and four years, respectively, now. And people are kind of getting fed up with it. They see what's happening at the national level, now happening at the state level. And most Coloradans are saying, you know what, we just want to be left alone. Stop this stuff. A couple of minutes we got left here. I mentioned a little bit about what is happening now in Arizona, in Texas, California, certain areas, yeah. but certainly the, the flood, the wave that is coming over the American border right now. And we've already talked how it impacts those cities and towns there. What is the thinking in Colorado? Because certainly I, from my friends in Colorado that I've talked to, they've told me they're concerned about it as well, that it will change their way of life eventually. Well, it already is. We've had a lot of 
We've had murders here. We've had a lot of drive-by shootings. The drug cartels are very active in Colorado. This is a pathway up to Illinois and other places. I think what amazes me, though, and I, and I said this the other day on the show, you know, as the former Undersecretary of Homeland Security and Director of FEMA, I understood that only in certain circumstances can the president call up the National Guard. And it kind of bothers me that Rick Perry and, and the governors in Arizona, of course, Jerry Brown's never going to do it, but some of these other governors, Susana Martinez in New Mexico, why don't they call up the National Guard with this influx, and why don't they take control of this situation? Uh, I, I know it's, it's fraught with all sorts of political ramifications, but if we're going to argue that the governors truly are in charge of their states, this is a chance for them to stand up and kind of draw that proverbial line in the sand with the feds. Okay, then why don't they do it? I don't know. It drives me nuts. Uh, of course, they're not going to do it in Colorado because we don't have the detention centers yet. But I don't understand why Rick Perry, a Republican, I don't understand why Susanna Martinez, a Republican, some of these others don't just say, you know what, this is impacting our people. This is, I understand it's an immigration issue, but it's also a state security issue. Call up the National Guard. I mean, if this were a natural disaster, what would they do? They uh, call it the National Guard. And some would call it a natural disaster. 20 seconds yeah. left. The Patent Office has canceled some Washington uh, Redskins trademarks. Your take. I know you're going to talk about it today on KHOW. I was born in Oklahoma. Oklahoma means land of the red man. What are we going to do? Take away the word Oklahoma? This is absurd. This is political correctness gone off the deep end. Do you, think, do you think that eventually, though, the way this is happening, that the Redskins are going to have to change their name? They're going to lose this eventually. Know. You know, Dan Snyder's aggressive enough. He'll end up in a federal court somewhere. He did one time, and the Court of Appeals threw this out. So we'll see if that happens again. It's a great example of the federal government once again stepping into a private business and telling people what they can and cannot do or what they can say and not say. Six, Crazy. 6.30 KHOW and 8.50 KOA, the two best radio stations in Denver, Colorado. Mike Brown, Deep thanks up. so much for joining us, my friend. We'll do it again. Anytime. Take care. All right, take care. Around the dial. We do it a lot right here on Midpoint. Uh, what we also do is we ask you your opinion. Here's your social media chances to do that and tell us about what you've just heard. Twitter, email, and Facebook. Because right here on Midpoint every day, we question everything. Hello.